Jaded Currency asks in the Excel subreddit, add rows based on certain cells. I need to create a form slash tracker which will have individual values such as name, category, date, and numbers. Creating the form is something I have figured out, but can information in those cells be moved to rows in a different sheet? So anytime the form is filled, a new row is added with the required fields. Is it possible without using a macro? Or alternatively, can Microsoft Lists do this? Thanks. So as far as I'm aware, it is not possible to do this without a macro, um, but I'll do my best to guide you through the process so you can build this macro yourself. So how I understand the problem is that we have here a form that takes in a name, a category, a date, and a number. And then the user fills it in. So Lewis, um, teacher, um, and let's take the 2nd of December, 2023, and then a number 10. So the user fills out this information and then there's a button we click and that will move this information uh, to another sheet that contains a list of data. So then here we have uh, actually, I'll do a transpose. So with the transpose function, what it does, we input a range or an array and it will transpose it. So if it's vertical, it will be horizontal and vice versa. So I'll take this as an input and there we have it. Okay, so now we will need to have a macro that we assign to a button, right? So perhaps you could already insert a button. Uh, so how we do this, we go to insert shapes and then we take here uh, this round rectangle with rounded corners that looks like a button, right? And so we draw it and we say, uh, here we type add data. And so perhaps you can um, change the alignment a bit. There we go. So it's nicely in the middle. You can make it bold and increase the size a bit like this. Okay, that should be nice and clear. The formatting of the button, feel free uh, to go ham with these options here, but this should work. So if you click on this button, right, this data should be taken and be put over here. That's what we're looking for. Um, okay, so in order to do that, we must go to the developer tab. If you don't have this developer tab in your ribbon, you can add it. You simply do a right mouse button, click in your ribbon, you click on customize ribbon, and then you check developer here uh, under the main tabs. It will be unchecked by default, so you'll have to enable it like this. Next, we will rename these sheets to input and output. So we have input and output. Then in the developer tab, we go to the button Visual Basic, and this will allow us to code our macro. Here we click on Insert Module, and here we can start hyping our Visual Basic code. So we need to write a function that will take the data from the one worksheet and then place it here in the second worksheet. So to define a function, we always start with sub and then we give the function a name. So in this case, add data. And then we have opening and closing parentheses where you can input parameters for your function. But in this case, we don't need anything. And when you press enter, uh, the Visual Basic editor um, will automatically also write and sub. So the first thing I want to figure out is which cell is the next empty one, right? Because each time we input new data, uh, the cells will have to shift down so that they don't overwrite each other, but each new data is put underneath the previous data entry. So for this, we will initialize a variable. And so in VBA, we do this with the dim keyword. So dim empty cell. So we create a variable called empty cell. And so the empty cell is a range or a cell reference really. Okay, so then we say empty cell, so set empty cell. So we will now tell VBA what empty cell will be, this variable. So with the equal sign, you say, okay, what it needs to be. Okay, so next we must define what the empty cell variable will equal to. Well, first of all, we're telling VBA on which workbook we're working on. We're working in this exact workbook, so we're not looking at another file. So then we write this workbook. Next up, we want to tell VBA which sheet we're working on. So then we use the sheets method and we write in between double parentheses, the name of the sheet being outputs. Okay, very good. Next, 
we want to tell Excel or VBA in which range we're looking to find the next empty cell. So in this case, that would simply be the A column. So we write range for A, A. So this is how we identify column A. Next up, now we will be looking for the next empty value and we can do this with the find method. So we write find and we need to pass in three arguments. The first thing is what we're looking to find. So we're looking to find empty cells. So we do this by using two double quotation marks with nothing in between, meaning they're empty. Okay, where are we looking for this empty value? So we use the look in argument for that. Well, it is in the value. So we write XL values. And next, where or what is the scope of what we're looking at? Well, the entire range. So for this, we use the look at um, argument. And so this will be XL whole. We're looking at the entire range. Okay, so empty cell is a variable and empty cell will equal the next empty thing that is being found in the column A from the sheet output of this workbook, right? And so this find function, all it does is it looks for an empty cell within this range. That's how you have to look at this. So next we need to define the cell where we are actually going to take something from. So for this, we'll create a new variable and we'll call this dim um, input cell as range. Now we also need to define the input cell variable. So set input cell. And so this equals same as above this workbook. So we're also working this workbook, but the sheets is different. This time we're looking at the input sheet. Okay. And so what is the cell we're looking at at the input sheet? Well, that's the range and that's cell B1. So if you remember from the input sheet, we have name, category, data, number in column A, and then the actual input fields will be in column B. So B1 will contain the name input. So now all we have to do is take the empty cell, so empty cell, and we want to change the value of the empty cell. So we reference the value and we set this to the input cell. There we go. So this should work. Now, the issue is that we also need to do the same thing for category, date and number. So once again, we take the empty cell, but we don't want to change the empty cell again. We want to change the cell that's one to the right of the empty cell. So for this, we can use the method offset. And what offset does is we can move from a cell. So currently we're taking the reference to the empty cell. And now with offset, we can move a number of rows or columns to the left, right, top or bottom. So first we define the row offset. Well, we want to stay at the same row. So that's a zero, but we want to move one to the right. So the column offset will be one. So next up we want to take the value of that cell, just like we did before, and want to equal this to the input cell. But once again, not the input cell, because that contains a name, we need to go down one. So for this, we will once again use the offset method. Now, in this case, the row offset will have to be one, right? Because uh, the category will actually be in B2, so we need to move down one, but we want to stay in the same column B, so the column offset will be zero, just like that. Now we simply copy and paste this twice more and we change this. So to a two and a three, and here we also to a two and a three, right? So for the second one, this is the date, right? We are going two to the right at the output sheet and two to the bottom in the input sheet. And same thing here for the number. Okay, this looks pretty good. One last thing to make our uh, Excel a bit more useful is to clear the inputs when we've added the data. This way we can more easily add new data. So what I will be doing is to copy this code here. And this is the code that we used to reference uh, cell B1 in the input sheet. But in this case, we're not only looking to clear the contents of cell B1, we want to clear all of the input fields. So that goes from B1 to B4. Right? So the range from B1 to B4. Well, the values of those cells, they need to be empty. So equal to two double quotation marks, meaning nothing. Okay, so we've completed our add data function. So I simply will click here on the save icon.
Now, what's very important is that you save your Excel as a .xlsm file, right? So if I now go File, Save As, you can see here it says Excel Macro Enabled Workbook .xlsm. Normally it will save at .xlsx and then your macro will not work. So it's very important that you use this extension, the .xlsm extension. So the last thing we need to do is now assign this macro to the button so that whenever we click the button, uh, the macro will be activated. So we do this by doing a right mouse button click on the button and then selecting assign macro from the drop down menu. So we click on that and then we get an overview of all of the macros available in our sheet. So here we have add data. So we click on this and click on OK. OK, so now we're ready to test out our new macro. We click on add data. As you can see, the input fields have been cleared. And if we go to output, we can see that the data has been added over here. Now, don't be alarmed. The date is not in the correct format, but you can simply click here and then change the date like that. OK, let's try another one. So we have Maurice. Then we have as an input date 10 to 2022. 20, no, sorry, that's a date, my bad. And then category we have doctor. And then as a number, we have 11. Let's add this data as well. And as you can see, a new row has been added. So the script works as intended. So the end user simply fills out these four fields, clicks on the add data button and can continue adding data and it will be added to this output sheet. I know the initial solution asked for no uh, macro, but I don't think it's possible to do without. And I also think the macro is reasonably easy. So perhaps one last time, let me walk you through the macro so you can better understand what's going on. So we create sub add data. This is how we define a function. So we're saying when we click the button, right, execute this function of add data. And so everything in between sub add data and end sub will be executed when we click on the add data button. Now to make our life a little bit easier, we have created two variables, an empty cell and an input cell. While it might not necessarily be necessary to create these variables, it makes your life a lot easier because now we can here down below simply reference these variables as empty cell and input cell. Otherwise, we would have to write all this out again and again and again. So that's not very efficient. Usually in programming, there's a principle of do not repeat yourself if it's not necessary. Of course, in this case, we have repeated ourselves a little bit, but I think it's acceptable simply because it's quite easy to change. So we've created these two variables. So we initiate a variable with the dim keyword. So we're creating a variable. Then we have the name of our variable, empty cell. And then we have to say what kind of variable we are creating. In both instances, we're creating a range. Even though in reality, it's one single cell, we still call that a range in Visual Basic. So we create these two variables. Next up, we need to define what these variables actually are. So for the empty cell, we look in this workbook and we look in the sheet output. In the output sheet, we take a look at the column A, and in column A, we want to find the next empty column. That's what we're doing. Then the input cell, that's equal to this workbook as well, we're looking in the input sheet and we're taking the value from B1. So all we're doing is we're setting the value of the empty cell to whatever is in the input cell. And then we do it for all of the other cells as well. And so we move to these other cells using the offset method. With the offset method, we move zero down and one to the right. And here we're moving one down and zero to the right. That's because our data is in a vertical form in the input sheet and in a horizontal form in our output sheet. And then the last thing we're doing in this, in the input sheet, to the range from B1 to B4, the values of those cells, we set them to be empty so that the end user can very easily input new data.